This episode brought to you by MaxEffortMuscle.com. We got some great inspiration, motivation, uh, some good uh, roundtable talk. Danny, it's a good episode. Yeah, you, your quote was stolen, but yeah, we it's got, okay. Yeah, it was all good. Shout out Cole, but yeah, we got we a lot of it. inspiration on and TikTok. knowledge bombs. Yeah, <laughs> neck roll. <laughs> it was good, Trayvon. Yeah, I mean, this episode will definitely make you do like a lot of self reflecting and shit. So it's a good yeah. one. Self self reflecting. We're talking about what's inspiring us. A lot of good stuff on this, guys. No, I think that uh, the conversation went a lot of different directions, but you will come out of this episode a better person and really thinking about quality items, which is what we do here on the motherfucking yeah. round table. Yeah. Let's go to the show. Round table podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at small arms, Danny at Trey speed and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susak. We are back on the microphones. How we doing today, fellas? What's up? What's up? Chilling. Uh, Trey? Chilling. Yes, you are. <laughs> All right. Brought to you by MaxEverMuscle.com. Of course, uh, my idea was one piece of content, quote, saying, song lyric. Yeah. Could be anything. Uh, Is that, yours a song lyric? No, I mean, <laughs> could be. Probably. Could have been. Probably. Yeah. Uh, that's inspired us potentially lately because, you know, everyone's looking for inspiration from time to time, and then we'll kind of weigh in on it. So, easy format. Daniel. I feel like you have something. You're really scrolling there. Well, I was I was kind of going between two things. One of them was you usually go between two things, Danny. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> Jeez. I feel like Danny's going to go with a quote. He's, he's always got banger quotes. He's got. Yeah. He's a slut up. for a good quote. He's just fucking I'm ready for quotes. Like a little whore. slut, yeah. little slut whore. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I said. He yep, usually yep. goes between two things. All right, all right. <laughs> he's well, the guy on the Megatron. <laughs> <laughs> That guy's a degenerate. Yeah, for yeah. sure. You have degenerate tendencies. Yeah. Go to the yeah. starting nine. You're yeah. really tune in. You're a really <laughs> hey. You're a really disciplined guy with a lot of degenerate tendencies. I am. How about <laughs> but, all of us? But but it's all it's all like middle school degenerate yeah. tendencies. Yeah. That's the best part about it. Yeah. 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 You can laugh oh, at a shit. picture by That's yourself. So, uh, we'll get serious in a second. Somebody said that to Will Compton. They were like. This guy ain't even a good football player. He just made a living on middle school humor. Yeah. And then he was like, that's fucked up. But of course, everyone thinks middle school <laughs> humor is <laughs> funny. <the> yeah. <laughs> I mean, you say uh, wiener. That's what yeah, you, that, that's no, wiener is one of my favorite ones to say. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. All right. Ready, Danny? Go ahead. Now let's get serious. Jesus Christ. <laughs> we got to get out of the way. Yeah. It yeah, only yeah. took yeah. like 30 seconds of the podcast for it to come out. All right. All right. Um, wiener. How about this? Um, so I've been diving into some like Jim Rohn stuff a little oh, bit okay. here and there. Yeah, Jim, um, Rohn, Jim Rohn's voice is interesting. Yeah, kind of twangy. It, yeah, it wasn't like what I was expecting. I yeah, think. he sounds like yeah. an old like tw uh, like country dude. Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm just gonna read the the whole thing or the I mean it's like it's three sentences. So mm -hmm. I, I already sent this to you, but okay. Um, don't wish it was easier. Wish that you were better. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. We get paid for bringing value to the marketplace. We don't get paid for time. It's fucking real good. Break so, it down, Danny. Break it down. Why did Why did it inspire you? Um, I don't know. I think it just like I just Im immediately think of like the the corporate marketplace where you're you know clocking in, clocking out, collecting mm -hmm. the paycheck, no matter what you're doing. You know, so um, you know I, I used to work at a you know Fortune 500 I think company for sure. Um, and it, that's exactly how it was. It didn't matter. I mean, you could totally, you know, lowball everything and do the bare minimum or even sometimes less than the bare minimum and still scrape by mm -hmm. and still collect a paycheck. But I feel like that's just like the complete wrong mentality, um, especially when you're exposed to something like like this environment or if you're actually trying to progress in your career. Mm -hmm. um, we always talk about over delivering, going the extra mile and that's always stuck with me ever since I started working with you. Yeah. Um, with like Core G Fitness, like in like 20, what's 20, late 2015, 2016, yep. um, is like, I always told myself that this is totally 100% on me if I fuck this up. Mm -hmm. Because I feel the same way about myself too. Yeah. Just because <laughs> like I had the power to, to put more and more and more in and then come up with ideas or shoot them to you. Mm -hmm. to, to kind of, you know, to feed the machine to keep yeah. it going. So, um, so yeah, just trying to be as, I just try to make myself, I mean, where, wherever I am, whether it's Quiggy Fitness, Max Effort, I just try to make myself as valuable as possible so that I'm 
basically irreplaceable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like the way I kind of process Well, good, because I, I don't want to replace you. Right. <laughs> good, good to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, uh, the thing I love about that quote, Danny, or just that statement is that when I run up against things I don't know how to do, that's the first thing I think. Like, is this a skill that I can learn potentially? Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of it needs outsource. Like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Any of you guys do. But there's certain things business wise when I'm looking at like, all right, I need to understand. I need to wish, like you said, like go attain a skill or an understanding so I can manage it better. You know what I mean? And so I always think like when I run up against something like, what, where do I need to get better at? Right now, my main thing is trying to get more organized. Like I've always prided myself on kind of being a shoot from the hip guy, but the reality is like, I need to be more organized. Even if it's just a tiny bit, that'll help me. Right. Because we're trying to manage so many things and create content and do all that. And so I took a kind of page out of that, uh, Craig Ballant, I think it's Ballantine's book that I've been reading right now. And he had, I don't even know how I ended up with all this shit. I think he sent it to me for free or whatever, but it's got all these like organizational things. Yeah. And I'm like, well, fuck it. I'll give it a try for a couple of days. It's like a template. Almost. Yeah. It's like a template. Like, you know, to actually schedule your day. So when I said, yo, I'm out at 10 today, I actually have to be out at 10 because I'm going somewhere, <laughs> but that's really what my schedule says today. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, y'all got in it. Corey's running Does, nice. Yeah. 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 Schedule, <laughs> yeah. He's running his schedule. Yeah. I mean, I might yeah. be a dangerous motherfucker <laughs> if I actually have a schedule. I'm just uh, saying. It'd be hilarious if you had like an assistant, what that would even oh, look like. Well, I need to be my own fucking assistant first. And then I'll <laughs> hire Rachel. <laughs> Yeah. Ah! Like, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. She'd be like, fuck off. Yeah. Um, but okay. <laughs> this is a good example. I've been more organized for about 48 hours, maybe 72. <laughs> Danny, how far ahead are we on content right now? Uh, we are basically through like August 18th, pretty much. And, and today is August 4th. Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm saying. Like just that alone. And what I noticed was putting it in place, even if I don't feel like quote unquote, feel like doing it, it's there. So I just make myself. And if I don't, if I didn't put it on there, I probably just wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. So it's like as motivated and as uh, crazy as I am it has helped a ton. So I was wishing myself more organized. So I'm trying my best to try to see what happens. So that are you like scheduling yeah. out like, all right, I'm going to think about this from this hour. And then you know, maybe later it's like, I'm only making content from this part to this part yeah. and shit like that. That's literally what I did the last couple yeah, of days. It's major and it, key. it's really worked a lot. Um, because I think obviously I'm trying to put a lot of time into max effort right now. So I, I need to be, well, we put time into everything, but I wanted to be really e efficient when Treadway came over the other day for the TikTok yeah. content. Like I've been putting out way more stuff publicly too, than I have in a while. Um, we're so efficient in the early morning of getting everything put together and to, you know what I mean? Like it's, it's mm -hmm. so crispy that it's like, I need the rest of my day to feel like that, mm -hmm. whether it's here, whether it's the public stuff. And so we've had that wound tight from Corey G fitness for so long. It's like second nature. I need the other shit to be second nature too. And that's kind of what I'm working on, but that is, but you sent me that quote a couple weeks ago mm -hmm. or at least a week ago. And I remember thinking, God, I wish I was more organized. <laughs> it's really just not just, natural for yeah. me at all. It just really isn't. He states a lot of like really obvious stuff. It's yeah. just like the classic case of that. You're like, Oh, well, yeah, obvious, obviously. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. But like, but it's none of the shit you do. Like at least consistently, probably. I, I would say that most of things are like that. Mm -hmm. It's not hard to diet. No, I'm saying it's not like most people kind of know it's, you kind of know what you need to be doing, but it doesn't yeah. mean that you are actually doing it. Yeah. And so that's why I was like, all right, well, I'm going to actually like, yeah, like I say, fuck, fuck it. I don't want to be like this, but let me try it and see what, how I, how I am. Yeah, for sure. Maybe it's a breakthrough. Maybe. I mean, I feel like my wiener's growing. I feel like my chest is growing. Know that's I feel like, true. you know, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you want B to C cup. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. 21 okay. days to you. Trayvon, your yeah. turn. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I like the idea of like, like from the quote, like take, like just having skills in general. Like it's like you said, like you can't master everything and no. be able to know how to do everything like to its full, like, you know, to give it like it's full everything that it, you can do. But like, you should still have like an understanding and a basis though, and like as many skill and just as many like yes. skill sets as possible. Even if it's just like a basic understanding of like whether it's just like how long it takes for something to get done, or you know what I mean, like different things like that. So and then you can like work better with other people. You also just have like a better under so and then like also like when you 
if you need to do it, you can also just figure it out then too. You just have like, you know, just a base of understanding. All of you guys have figured out elite skill sets that you execute on a regular uh, basis. And then me asking that, that's a good point, Trey, is I used to, I asked Cole this a lot. I don't know how long this is going to, I don't know what my ask is actually asking of you because I can't do it. Yo, gee, this is actually like a day's worth of work. Well, I might think it's worth a fucking hour's worth of work. I don't know. Same with you when you're putting together edits. Like, you know, so that that communication from me to you guys was really important. So I know what I'm asking for. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think about it like that. They're just like, you're, you know what I mean? And so I think that that communication for the skill that I can't do that you I need you guys to do and then having that understanding has, has helped me a ton and hopefully helped us work together better. You know what I mean? Because I, I value everybody's time at this table. So good for sure you want to weigh in on danny's uh yeah actually that quote reminded me of uh so like whenever things get hard like i like tend to like run towards it yeah. my natural like, running the fire I, yeah and i think it started in football whenever you were running sprints <laughs> and everyone okay. just fucking hated doing that yeah but You're like fucking I that, love it. yeah and i was like fuck it let's run some more yeah, like yeah. give me more and it made me think of remember the titans uh whenever they're doing fucking up downs dude i they're love like, i love like, that movie yeah. what is pain french yeah. bread yeah that, yeah that's, <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> plays in my head whenever shit gets going that, i like that i'll tell you what the remember the titans gettyberg scene is mm. probably one of my favorite it's ones powerful Real I mean, powerful, you have fucking dude. Denzel. Talking. Well, are you kidding me? Yeah, <laughs> that's, Denzel that's a windmill. is just that fucking no jumper, epic, yeah. bro. Yeah, that I need. To, I need to watch that movie with Andon. I think we watched it once. We need to rewatch. It's a fucking bang. That movie. has you ever watched yeah. Varsity Blues? Huh. That might be no, but what? I, isn't there a lot of degenerate stuff? Oh on yeah, blue? that but might hey, be. Bad. <laughs> but, but I'm but, not trying but, to. But, but, Billy Bob gonna puke. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> but. I think it could really help impact them. So okay. Way. I think it would it, it impacted me. I don't know. Uncle I don't Cole. know. I don't know in what way though. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. The thing. yeah. Well, it starts out there playing pee wee football. I think he'd really. That's what okay. attracted me to it. And our like colors were like blue and shit. Yeah. I asked I him like, yeah, about a couple of the kids that were new, and he looked at me. He's like, "Dad, I think they're gonna get lit up." Yeah. <laughs> Like he's talking like a football guy. When we went to Top Golf. He was talking just mad shit. He talks so much, so shit. much shit. To he's me. talking shit to Trey. <laughs> Fuck yeah! <laughs> like Trey did hit it off the ceiling, which I've never seen happen yeah, to Top Golf before. Fun. That's hard to do. Wait. That one, and when he would swing real hard, and then it would just hop on the concrete yeah. and then just fall oh, over. Yeah. But yeah, Andon was talking all yeah, kinds of what's shit. It, like, what's what's his shit talking? What's well, because he was beating us. Yeah. And then I was like. He me he was beating me. Yeah. <laughs> he, oh, that's what he. Okay. Oh, like, Trey. Oh, Trey. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking. And then he started but talking. Like, but like, he started talking it, shit but to like, me. But like, make it known, though. Like, yeah, yeah, he's loud. Yeah. He's, he's <laughs> like, it's not like a little bit. Like, he's like yelling from the other oh, bag. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> well, then I fucking smoked him by a hundred. I finally got like a spot and I just started scoring. I went 20. I didn't, I didn't even like take my turn. I just hit 20 in a row because I made every one of them in one of the things. And I literally beat him by a hundo. Yeah, he was locked in. I was locked in. <laughs> I looked over Tyler. He's like, like we just kept rolling, dude. I was just smoking it. Anyway, that's amazing. All right, what was your what was your um, quote lyric or whatever today, Trey? Um, so mine was like, what's been fascinating to me recently is like the psychology of um, like bad habits that people have. Ooh, I like that. So like, um, so like, I guess like at the end of the day, like really the only person that's like stopping everyone is like yourself which Facts. is you know like just the base of it but like some you know I mean, like everyone has like a bad habit that of course they're maybe like a little bit aware of or they're not at all i would say most people are aware of it yeah yeah <laughs> but just like being able to identify those though and then like you know maybe like figure out why you do them mm. or you know I mean like how to get better at it or like you know I mean, just shit yeah, like yeah. That. what kind of sparked that would you come across or is it just your own thoughts there's a song Okay, I knew what it. What song? What Which song? Which one is it? Is it the new Drake song? <laughs> Trey loves Drake. I know he does. So does he, Andy. He loves Drake. Yeah. <laughs> I like almost got in an argument with some NFT dude on Twitter. Dude said, dude said Drake was like the best artist of all time, and I was like, bro, you're like you're kidding me. And he, said, he, was like, and he, was like, he was like, well, who do you think it is? And I said, I said Michael Jackson, which well, I think is a respectable answer. Yeah. Like at least an, you, know, yeah. you can argue it. Yeah. Over Drake, definitely. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah and, this, of and this dude's like, Michael Jackson, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Trey out here arguing. Who, yeah. Who's your Mount Rushmore <laughs> artist? Um, probably like Michael Jackson, Kanye, Get um, <laughs> Jay Z, mm. and 
probably like Andre 3000. Dude, I fuck, I fuck with Andre 3000. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. So it was a uh, song though. It's a song called ahead. Bad Habits by From. an artist called Steve Lacey. Okay. It's like R&B music. Mm. Oh, all right. Fuck with R&B. Yeah, it's pretty new. Yeah. Sounds all right. Quiet. But that's, I like that just like thought process because a lot of people do multiple things daily that are definitely fucking bad for them. And then if you can unpack like on yourself, like, why am I doing this? Yeah. Like, what am I mm-hmm. searching for? What am I running from? Why, why am I sabotaging myself? That's an interesting thought process. I like that. Yeah. Trait. Or just like, you know, like how people have like a routine that they follow like every single day or like at a certain point in the day that they do, they do something specific like every time, you know? Yeah. Like identifying those and like, is it, you know I mean, helping you, is it not helping you? Mm. Or like if you are doing it, like how much time is being spent on it in the first yeah. place? Like just being aware of that kind of shit. I love when I'm doing things that I like that. I try to really think to myself, am I getting closer to what I'm trying to do? Or am I getting further away by, by doing this action? Man, it's pretty simple. I used to think yeah. that when I would walk in my pantry and I got like 12 different things of chips there. Cause you know, I got three kids, right? So we got Pringles, <laughs> get the hot Pringles for Andon. We got the fucking <laughs> jalapeno <laughs> potato chips for me. We got like basically, and I walk in and go, I want some of all of this, but one, this, this is taking me further away. And then I walk back out and then, then I walk back in and I go, oh, okay. So anyway, all right. Uh, Cole, you want to weigh in on Trayvon's? Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. I don't know. I can go real quick. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, please. Yeah, you should even get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, the first, this is I was new, getting this ready is to say famous, my name. Yeah. This is the new Trey famous fo- uh, yeah. TikTok footballer. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> I, my topic is someone about Okay, that. all right. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, dude. Uh, the, the first thing uh, that I thought of was actually something that Linda sent me this morning. Okay. Uh, on that Jane, what up, wifey? Jane, yeah, what's up? Shout out. Um, Shout no, out. for shout outs, but not free. <laughs> Clip that guy. Yeah. Um, is uh, yeah. So James Clear, he's like basically the modern day founder of habits. Yeah. I mean, everything science and you know application related with this. Um, so he always talks about like basically what like why can't you adopt the habit that you want to to adopt? Like mm-hmm. why can't you do that? Or what what are the um, what are the hurdles? So. He takes it back to like the like the belief level, so like or like the identity, like what type of person do you want to be? Like yeah. taking it down to that foundational yeah. level versus just like, you know, writing down a plan and then like, uh, you know, going cold turkey and then trying to like change everything all at once, and yeah. then that happens for what three days, and then you're. But that's really just the ideology of like a a, a goal for yourself, saying like this is the person I want to be. Yeah. I'm not that person right now. Mm-hmm. What are the things limiting me? And it's usually these bad habits yeah. at certain <clears throat> times that are sabotaging you. Yeah. Like I think one of the examples he has in Atomic Habits, his book was um, the simple example of uh, like he had a guy that uh, reached out to him and he, all he did was he wanted to be the type of person who would go work out. Um, so like he started out by going like literally he would drive to the gym and he would only be there for five minutes, and then he had to leave. Oh, yeah, I remember reading this, um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and then, like, obviously, it, it, it snowballed, it compounded, he got more consistent, and then he inched that up and became more, you know, um, consistent over time. Um, and then he lost, like, over 100 pounds. Just from that, like, simple starting point. Just get there and do five minutes. Yeah, just to, to get the momentum started. That's part so. of it. That's good. All right. So that made me think I was just trying to look for the quote, but, sure. uh, Naval, have you read Naval's book? Mm-hmm. You read no, Naval's I haven't, book? but I know <clears throat> definitely good read, yeah. but he was talking about how, like with all of like the elite people that he's like work with the high level workers and stuff like that, they're, they might be the most disciplined, you know, creative people like that. But at some point, the motivation, the reels inside, like slowly fades away. Mm-hmm. He's like, it's just like human nature. But if you keep being consistent, it will come back, which you, yeah, you, you talked say about that's what I was going to talk yeah. about today. Jim Jones is the one who dropped it, which I'm not even like a Jim Jones fan, the rapper, but I saw him on a million dollars yeah. worth of game and he dropped that same thing. He was like, look, the, cons- the, the, uh, the motivation is going to, you know, like squander from time to time. But if you're just a consistent person with what you're about, when the motivation comes back to a level you're going to execute because you're already in the game. And that makes sense because I have over the years been a really consistent person 
and I'm a fucking banger at sometimes and I'm not a banger at sometimes, but if I'm, it's kind of that above the line, not below the line too much type of thought process. But when it starts rocking and you're fucking in it, you can just, you can really propel yourself. But I think a lot of people, when they lack the motivation, they also drop the consistency mm -hmm. and then you're double fucked. I'm only single fucked if I ain't got the, well, cause you have <laughs> such a strong baseline. Correct. So I'd rather be single fucked than double fucked. Yeah. Yeah. Any right. Day of the week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Cole. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Does that make I sense? Think, I think you need to put an entry on urban dictionary. For what that <laughs> <means>. <laughs> maybe I don't want to just know. saying. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I don't want to know what it means. Actually. Maybe, yeah. There's probably already an entry. So <laughs> yeah. We'll scratch that. Yeah. But I, but I agree. I think that's is a huge point, dude, because <laughs> I was listening to that. I think it was on my Explorer page on that's IG. Cool. And I was like, this is fucking, this is like really, really good advice. Mm -hmm. Because what I know is my superpower is consistency because I realize that is how I'm going to win because I'm not really that great at anything. But if I can be consistent, I can fucking win long term. And I think most people are probably in that bucket. Like they're not fucking LeBron James. So you better be fucking consistent. And by the way, he's pretty fucking consistent, which is why he's great. So it's like the people that are great at something and consistent makes them even greater. So it's like, but if you want to like, you know, kind of gain steam because of some things that aren't there, maybe potentially whether it's in, you know, whatever you do, like you have to be a consistent person mm -hmm. and the motivation or inspiration has to come from so many different things. I think that's why everything that's in front of me all the time, like even the stuff that Cole's made that's up here, like, you know, from Pac to Jordan to Kobe, like that shit's all inspiring. We see it every day with our brand. You know what I mean? That he's made the stuff that's behind us here. Like, people don't realize that that shit needs to be in front of you all the time because you're trying to be consistent, trying to keep inspired and trying to stay motivated. If you don't keep that stuff in front of you, you're going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. I think it's important. That was good. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Good. But it, you also stole my quote, but that's all right. I could find something else probably. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Danny, you want to weigh in on that? Well, I think we kind of just did. Yeah. Did you? Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Here. It's an Hold upcoming, so it's I, an I upcoming, find, it's an upcoming like, daily fire. Like, no. I do have yeah. another one ready. If oh you shit. It. All right. Unless you got something cool. I was just going to talk Go about on. like what, you know, has been inspiring me like creatively, and Please. Lately, you know, do it. So, uh, Triceps. obviously football hmm. season about to start. So this yeah. is, yeah, this yeah. is my time of the year where my creative goggles really come on. Cause I fucking love seeing what yeah. all the sports yeah. teams styles are like new for the new year. Cause usually each season they'll try, they'll, they'll, well, not unis, more of like their social media oh, like type it. shit. Mm -hmm. Cause usually, you know, new season it might be a new head coach. They want to fucking freshen things up. Yeah. And I view it as how, because, dude, college football, like, their schedule, I know, is chaotic as fuck. Yeah, 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 And I'm trying to think, I'm trying to look at what they're making being like, how are they making this, like, in a systematic way mm -hmm. and artful and, like, yeah. colorful and, like, creative and, like, works all the time. So I've been, like, looking at each team's and kind of giving Who's like, banger? Who's got some bangers right now? <laughs> so, obviously, number one, Ohio State. State yeah. They're always fucking banging. Now... I know, like their whole Scott, their whole style of what they used to do, like in 2017, and now has changed because they got some new people in there. Mm. But overall, I'm fucking with what they're doing. Of Dude, I feel like we could clip this right now, and that could be a TikTok. Yeah, it should. You could fucking green screen it. Fuck yeah. Okay, I'm um, just letting you so know. Kyle, okay. I would say Ohio State's number one. I, close second is uh, Iowa. Iowa really? shit looks really good. Yeah. Okay. Shout the out dude, to the Iowa dude. Yeah, the Iowa okay. dude's fucking <laughs> killing it right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh. I really, yeah, they're doing like a lot of, I guess like they're taking a lot of real world elements and making them into design style, which I kind of fuck So with. Iowa football count. I was really good. Uh, they're like photos and shit, how they color it. Like the whole scheme looks mm. really good. Um, them, dude, USC too. Since they got the new coach, I think they brought in some like freelance guys and they yeah. went in and like kind of redid everything. It's fucking clean. I know they just posted a pic of Kush whenever he was there because they were saying who's like the baddest motherfucker that's war. Yeah. Uh, and they were like, they posted a picture of Cushing, but it said him and like Ronnie Lott, mm. which is two fucking <laughs> dogs. Yeah. Dogs. <clears throat> But just like the the way that it was on social, the presence of it, it yeah. was fucking dude. Sick. I'm like, I think like <sighs> you know, I think I'm a slut for like white backgrounds. If you use a white background in any kind of like design, because mm. it's so easy to work off with the color. Yeah, and I think USC is doing it right. All right, for sure. Yeah, it's just so they're like they're like my. They have a good right color now. scheme for a white background. I feel like they yeah, do. Like course. yeah, they they really do. 
Um, Even though I hate USC. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you love them, Notre Dame. Uh, they're trash. Yeah. That <laughs> and dude, also like now, uh, there was like a lot of like recruits uh, going on visits and stuff like that. So it's been interesting to see like how we like do the photo shoots. Yeah. The production that like. I've, I've seen Ohio State's. They had some crazy fucking backdrop with all these crazy lights. It's like, that's some, like, Well, I mean, the shit. reality is for recruiting, for the NIL stuff, that their shit's got to be marketing. It's it's a it's, fucking multi-million which dollar that's, industry. Which, that's what, I, that's what I was thinking about. I was like, do, like, the creative teams for, like, these sports teams. Yeah. So, It's got to be off, like a business, man. First off, the people who are taking those jobs are, like, they're capping themselves on like the money that they yeah, probably should yeah, be yeah. making. Like they're fucking, cause if you think about it, they are literally the face of the brand. Yes. Sure. Like the team's good, but no <clears> one's <throat> going to fucking want to play for them. If your shit looks like it was made on like Microsoft paint, they could get paid way more. It's wild. And so seeing that there's like a whole big drama of like workers comp and like shit like that. But I, I think with the NIL shit, I think they're going to start like paying high you're gonna have to top notch. And I think with NIL that could take someone like, Cincinnati, who is now getting a lot of steam, if they make their social shit like really pop, which it's it's getting pretty good, yeah, they could legit be like up there for a while, dude. CJ so Stroud, about that. do you see what they said he's about to make? What two point four? Nuts, damn, two point four. As a college yeah. quarterback, let that sink in for a minute. I mean, what a game fucking changer! It's unbelievable. Yeah, but. The fact that, like, if you're the starting quarterback at Ohio State, like, from a recruiting standpoint, you think you're going to make – why wouldn't the next guy make $3 million? I mean, it's just going to keep going. Yeah. Yeah. It's fucking crazy, right? Yeah, so that's been going nuts. But amazing. Yeah. That's, um, good. that's good because I'm going to go check out some of those accounts. Yeah, there's, an, there's a Twitter account called uh, Skull Sparks. Okay. And they tweet out – they basically are, like – a fucking kind of like a news outlet job or type thing, but they'll like say job whore job. <laughs> no, they're like job posting. I don't know what I just okay. said. Board. Job but, board. Uh, job board. board. Yeah, I job think board. he's a job yeah. whore. I'm like, they'll, what? they'll like tweet out and like retweet. Oh, this is this team stuff. Like they'll just constantly I got put it. it in. So it's like kind of, you just go That's on there. You can cool. scroll down through. What's it called? Skull sparks. Skull sparks. Job yeah. whore. Yeah. All right, perfect. <laughs> yeah. Um, Shot. All right, but all right. So now back to TikTok, right? Please. Whatever. I'm kind of turning into like this football guy on TikTok. But, I mean, but I, on my for you page, I saw Cole with like five thousand <laughs> likes with his sunglasses on on a green screen talking about fucking uniforms and shit and, yeah. and face masks. It was awesome. So, yeah. So, <laughs> what's your so, account? Uh, it's just Cole who said. Okay. Yeah. Got so it. I'm thinking, you know, it's I'm in a weird predicament because. Football is like me at heart. I'm For a sure. big football guy, neck roll guy, which I think Twitter in the younger generation hasn't heard this perspective before. Yes. But so I have that going on. I have like, the should you do side. these in a neck roll? I was should thinking, you get in? Well, roll? I was thinking about like, I should, yeah, somehow do that. I, but now like the, see, I, yes. What if you did shirtless with fucking shoulder pads and a neck roll and then did your videos? You think people would fuck with that? Yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> I think they would. I, yeah. Sorry. Well, Go yeah, so it wouldn't take away. I'm talking to some guys. We're trying to make a, a push for neck rolls to come back. I agree. With that. Some like big, you know, TikTok accounts. Maybe mm-hmm. get the younger kids because the young kids brought back the mullets. Yeah, you know, neck rolls got to be coming now. They soon. need yeah, they need to bring back the neck rolls. Uh, huge fucking shoulder pads, all that. I think the new Revo helmets, ugly trash. I wouldn't let my kids step yeah. on the field with those. But all right, so I got the football TikTok side going on, which is not what I really expected to get into. But whatever. whatever. Um. Then I have that. Then I have like the artsy side, mm-hmm. and creative side, which, I, you know, I feel like that's another like face of like me. Yeah, yeah. Then I have the powerlifting side. Yeah. And I was just thinking, like, I have so much shit going on. Usually, a person only has like one thing that they're into, right? Okay. Yeah. Like they're like, I'm only like a fitness guy. Like this is me. Or like I'm only an I art only person, wear gym right? shark. Yeah. 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 You know, like. <laughs> yeah. I only. Yes. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And Naval had this <clears throat> quote that says. Um, no one is going to remember you past a certain number of generations, whether you're an artist, poet, poet, conqueror, uh, or anyone else. He goes, you have to create your own meeting, which is what it boils down to. And you have to decide. And then he said, no one in the world is going to beat you at being you. So like, 
that inspired me. Like I got some like inner confidence to just like fo- fucking own all of it. I could tell know? that like on your because I went through and saw a bunch of your football ones. I'm like Cole's really in it right now. He's finding the groove. Yeah, and you ain't scared. And uh, you know he talks about like there's what's the fuck is this book? I mean you're it's really the, inspired. Um, I got the write almanac this of Naval Ravikant. Peters is oh, super big. On. Okay, yeah, 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 <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But it's got some like banger quotes in there. He's been on. Tim's podcast multiple yeah, times. Yeah, I've heard him. He's What's his name? Really Naval? Yeah, Naval. N A V A L. Yeah, his He's Twitter's pretty fire Naval. too. All right, yeah. Um I'll get that. Ballisms. Take that take that. Yeah, I'll where was that. I going with this? But anyways, <clears throat> he was uh like I've been analyzing and like looking at brands I like, looking at certain people I like. Mm-hmm. And now it's like there's literally no one else doing what like I am doing or no. interested in what I'm in. So it's me now trying to like basically how do I make all the shit aligning, like come together yeah. to where it's like me? Cause right now TikTok's a whole nother side of me. Instagram's a side of me. Twitter's a side of me. Mm. And I want to like try to bring it together. Yeah. And, and when you really own and like no one is fucking with me when you bring it together, you win. Yeah. I think it would be epic if you could somehow, uh, get some content with a couple neck girl, like legendary neck girl guys. Yeah. Zach exactly. Thomas. Yes. You know what I mean? Brian Cox. Like the, the like it, a lot of these dudes like probably ain't super busy now they're retired that if you could be like this is this is the best ne- this is yeah. like one of the best neck roll guys yeah. of all time what, what does wearing a neck roll mean to you? yeah yeah that would be <laughs> epic I'm just saying good idea for content so that's good uh here's one I'm gonna bring up before we get out of here is I was watching this thing with Kobe and he talked about how he beats people. And I was like, all right, this is fucking epic. I wrote it down. Hold on. And he was like, all right. So I get up at three and I work from four to six. Then I chill for a little while. Then I work from nine to 11. Then I do this. Then I go from two to four. And then I cap it off from seven to nine. He's like, so basically I'm going to be five years ahead of everyone else. Because one, no one's willing to do that. Two, I'm going to do it every day. And so like his skill, so he just explained like in a nonchalant interview, how he killed everybody and that basically no one could fucking step to him. And it was like, not even in an arrogant way. It was just because he literally did that for so many years. And I think he had it scheduled where I do this from four to six. I work on this part of my game from nine to 11. I work on this. And it was like, I went two, four, six, it's eight hours. He's spending eight hours hours on his game every day for what 20 i mean it's more fucking than that. Wild. Yeah. yeah you know what i mean like i don't know how long he kept that schedule but i'm assuming since he got to the league at least and he played for 20 years so it's like minimum 20 years he kept that schedule and i believe every fucking second of it because he's a fucking lights out killer right but then you pose so and then i'm gonna ask the other question he dies so young though now he's a great He's a great one that no one and, and we're he's forever going to be locked as Kobe, like roughly like right my age or whatever. We're never going to see Kobe as Bill Russell as an old man, whatever. He's locked there. So is that amount of time to be that great at it? And everyone has to choose, I guess, this and he chose. But it's like because now he, he didn't really get the other part of life. You know what I mean? Because he spent all of his time doing this. It's eight hours. So you, you go back and forth where you're like, obviously, if he knows he's getting cut at 40 something, does he still do that? I don't know. I just think it was an intro. It, I had multiple thoughts when I heard it because I can identify, like, I'm a maniac like this. I could see, all right, well, I'm going to, I'm going to do shoulders from nine to 11. I'm gonna, like, I, I'm not, this isn't <laughs> yeah, that far yeah, of a stretch for yeah. me. I'm fucking halfway there. But the reality is, I still have in the back of my mind, there has to be other, there's other parts, you know what I mean? Cause Rachel asked me this the other day. She's like, do you think you'd be further ahead if you had somebody more like you as your partner, which I thought was a really interesting thing for her to say to me. And I said, yeah, maybe. But then when I think about it, I don't really know that that's to be true because I needed someone that could balance me out less crazy, right? She's still a disciplined person. There's still like, she, you know, never really interfered, but but I couldn't just stay in a diet phase for fucking five years. Like there has to, there had to be like, I, I wouldn't be near as good of a dad. Like I wouldn't have those other parts of my life. I'm not saying Kobe wasn't. I'm just saying like, it was one of those things where I saw that and was like, I could do that. And then I thought, but what, what else could I do? 
And so, I don't know, it was just like one of those, like, I, I can see myself being like that, but then he's also, his life stopped so young. Do you, did you miss, or did he live it exactly? I just wish I could get one 15 minute conversation that says, bro, would you still do it the same way if you knew you were done at 40? Or would you change a couple things to get more out of the other parts of life? I don't know. I don't know what the answer would be. I just thought it was an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, yeah. Some, I mean, yeah, it's a lot to unpack. There. It is a lot. There's so I mean, many I, different just, ways to think about that because if you think that, you know, if his mission was to become the greatest and stuff like that, then absolutely. And you, if you exactly. think that, if you think that a piece of him was like, I want to try to make the biggest impact on like a younger generation as possible by doing this or anything like yeah. that. He, ach he achieved, oh, he achieved that it. too. Yeah. And then even after like his uh, like career, like he was done playing, then he went on to like produce a show and won a, what do you win a, he won a Tony or one a of the Grammy awards. or yeah. Emmy yeah. or whatever, Emmy. whichever Emmy. one it is. Yeah. yeah. Like that's like yeah, very epic. impactful. So sure. Just, it, I don't just know. I it's interesting. Thing I think, think it just comes down to what do you want the most? Yeah. Right. I mean, I don't know. It's easy. Well, everyone does this <clears throat> thinking that that other part of life that you talked about was going to be just as long as the first part. That's kind of my point, right? You're not really guaranteed the second part. Not even really guaranteed exactly, the first part. Yeah. That's that's where I think it's more of the thought. Like the commitment of what you said, 100%. Be, Kobe probably thought he was going to live till he's 90. <laughs> probably. So the concept, which we'll never know, mm -hmm. of does anything change if you're not going to live to 90? Are you less of a maniac when you think your expiration is less? And I, I don't know what that looks like. I'm just thought it was an interesting thing. That's just the first thing I thought about when I saw the yeah. thing. I mean, right now for me, I mean, I feel like I always go back to this now, now that I have a little girl and stuff like that yeah. is like, is like setting up boundaries in certain parts of the day. Cause like when I'm here, I try to be as effective and efficient yeah. as I possibly can. So I can go home and not have that to do floating up over my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I can actually, you know, be there. Cause like I was just saying to, to Linda yesterday, it's like something like there's like little subtle changes every single day. And I'm like, man, this would really suck if I missed all this shit. Mm -hmm. Like it would really suck. It would really bother me. So, yeah. I mean that, at least that's my, my answer. Yeah. yeah. So but. I think this schedule doesn't have a lot of boundaries though. <laughs> no, no, for <laughs> you sure. Know what I mean, but like, yeah, like if he's, you know, if that's what he wanted the most, I mean, yeah, we achieved absolutely. to Cole's point. He achieved it. All. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you think, Trey? Um, I mean, absolutely. it's a lot to take in for sure, but like kind of like off of what Danny said, it's, I think it's just like something that's like subjective to like, yeah. everybody in life. And really at the end of the day, like, what do they personally want to yeah. like, get out of it? You know? Sure. So like, if that's what, if that's what he wanted, then yeah. he definitely achieved that. But like also though, I guess like too though, if that's what he wanted, but he also wanted these other bits and pieces though, then, that's what I think my bigger point. If you knew, would that still be as aggressive? Because I, the other question I would ask myself a lot is, if I knew what it would take, would I still do what I did? Like I knew how hard it was going to be to get to this point, and I would still sign up for it again a million percent. But then, like I think about this, and I think, well, if I knew I was done tomorrow, would I still sign up for the exact same thing? Would I you? don't know. That's don't, a question. No, I don't know. Nobody, nobody ever knows. Uh, so. that, that's my point. That's why yeah. it's one of those things you can't really know the answer for, but I just thought it was interesting to think about. No. Yeah. I, I think so. just to think about it is good. Yeah. It is, no, it is. That's why I brought, that's why yeah. I brought it up Yeah. because I was super <laughs> motivated by the fucking video. But the first thing I thought about was that I was like, I wonder if this motherfucker would sign up for this again. Yeah. The answer is probably yes. From Kobe's <laughs> standpoint, I think, but you know, this is interesting. It's pretty fucking heavy. It's super heavy. <laughs> but we're provoking thought here at the round. Yeah, it makes table. you want to do yeah. some like internal reflection. Right. I've been, I've been having, <laughs> I've been, go, I've been having a lot of those thoughts lately. Yeah. Well, another thing I keep thinking about that <clears throat> Ryan holiday visits a lot in his stoicism stuff. Yeah. Is he talks about Alexander the great mm -hmm. and like his like, you know, grand goal was to take over the fucking world. Like Legitly. he wanted to be like, it was like world conquest. Right. Yeah. But then he always talks about his mule driver. And guess what? They're both buried in the same fucking ground. And it was like, all for what? You know? See, that's... So I'm like... Yeah. Yeah. That's like, what man. Denzel always said. Like, you can't take your... Uh, you can't take a U-Haul with your hearst. It, yeah. You can't, There's never yeah. a U-Haul behind the hearst. Yep. <laughs> you can't take it with you. He said the Egyptians tried and they got robbed. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. 
<laughs> that was like one of my favorite things I saw Denzel. He's like, and the Egyptians tried. <laughs> and they got robbed. <laughs> They try to put him in the tombs. Shout out Denzel. With yeah, yeah. Shout, yeah, Denzel should get all the free shout outs. <laughs> the fucking beast. What I saw a thing about him the other day, and he said that like this second part of life is all about teaching now. And that, you know, because he was so blessed, he had so many opportunities, he messed up so many times. But so I've been, I, I've went through a bunch of his videos. I mean, he says a lot of the same stuff, depending on where he's, you know, speaking at, but it's, they're all fucking absolute fire. But so when, you think about the thing he did um, with remember the Titans, like that shit is like second nature, bro. That's just him. Like I'm sure a lot of that shit is scripted. I get it, mm -hmm. but I bet a lot of it is just real so Denzel natural. talk. Yeah. Hell yeah, <clears throat> it's super inspiring. Um, well, and he had this like crazy. I don't know if you guys know the story. He had this, like crazy revelation from like some old lady at his mom's beauty shop. Like he was like he said he was failing out of Fordham, I believe, which is like pretty smart mm -hmm. school. He was in his mom's beauty parlor and this lady was getting her hair done or whatever. And she looked at him and said, you're going to uh, travel the world and help millions of people. And he was like, well, that sounds awesome. But right now, you know, it's not looking real fucking promising. But he said that he remembers it when he talks about it. He remembers the exact day it was. It was that impactful on him. The lady the day, the time, and he talks about, when he talked about the story, I was like, damn. But he's like, she just saw something in me and just felt like she needed to tell me that day. So crazy. Hmm. So, Denzel, if you haven't been down the Denzel rabbit hole on content other than his movies, you should definitely try. Uh, YouTube, there's a bunch of good shit. So, I don't know how you couldn't be inspired by today's episode. Yeah, there's definitely yeah. takeaways. A, a ton. Kyle What's should have a million fucking clips. Yeah. Including the one that you definitely could do a TikTok on. I should do a TikTok. Everyone go follow Cole's TikTok. Yeah. I've, I've been thinking away. How can I fucking merge like <clears throat> art and sports and all of it together? Yeah. Well, I think you bringing in the crowd for football and then. That's what I'm saying. Because yeah, like, at, at the end of the day, I'm a sports guy that does yeah. creative shit. I'm yeah. not the opposite. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Of course. So. I fucking love it. I'm trying to mix it up. All right. Roundtable podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G at Small Arms. Danny at Trey. Speed in the graphic gangster himself. Cole Susak. We are out.